Okay, I'm going to give you a scenario. And I want to, each of you are going to have to answer this. I want you to tell me which of the gifts you would use. And you can use more than one. There's not a right or wrong answer. But I want you to start thinking about these gifts and how they apply to your life. Okay, you have a major test tomorrow. What gift do you want? I'll get to you. Understanding. Understanding. This is one of just, and you can pick more than one. Understanding. Knowledge. Knowledge. Knowledge and wisdom. Get around the pillar here. You're, you're, you're stacking. You really want a good grade. Stack them all up. Okay. You find yourself in the middle of a gossipy conversation. Gossipy conversation. You're in a group of people and they're starting to gossip about others. So we'll go backwards. We'll start at the back of the room. Back table. Which one, what gifts would you use if you're with a group that's starting to gossip about others? Just pick one. It's multiple choice. Understanding. Well, first of all, you got to understand what the situation is, right? Good, good. Knowledge. Okay. Understanding. Counsel. Good. It's a good one. How would you use that? Right. And and maybe to actually give that gift. Say, hey, this is not right. Courage. Courage. That was the one I was expecting first. <laughs> okay. Courage. Courage and counsel. Courage and understanding. Counsel. Counsel and understanding. Counsel? Courage. Okay. Okay. Good answers. Because you have to understand the situation. You have to know if it's right or wrong. It takes courage, fortitude, to talk to others about what they're doing, or walk away from that conversation. Okay. So those were good answers. We'll do one more here. You're at the Easter Vigil, and the Mass is really long. How many of you have been to an Easter Vigil Mass? That's the one that's a Saturday night prior to Easter Sunday. If you don't know what I mean by the Easter Vigil. It is my favorite Mass of the year. <laughs> so, you're at the Easter Vigil. You know, it's a two-hour Mass. Usually minimum two-hour Mass. <laughs> Yeah, how many is being baptized coming into the whether they're being just baptized confirmed? How many readings Father chooses to have us do? <laughs> oh yeah, I gotta say generally it's all seven. Okay. So what gift would you use? Let's see, start at the back that time, let's start at the front. Wisdom. Okay. You're at a very long mass. What gift would you use? 
You ask the Holy Spirit to help me with this. Which one? Reverence. Okay, that's a good one. Understanding. So you can follow along with mass. Okay. Reverence. Either one of you. Understanding. Reverence and understanding. Understanding. Reverence. Understanding. Understanding. Reverence. Piety. Understanding and reverence. And knowledge. There's one there that I thought somebody might say, but yeah, why not? What what one did you what one do you think Jack and I are referring to? Fear the Lord, wonder and awe. That that particular mass. Oh, the the yeah. <laughs> But it's also, the, the amount of, the aura by all that candlelight is breathtaking. Yeah. Yeah, and how it starts is one light coming in to the church, and then it's spread as we're called to spread the light of Christ in the world, and how much brighter the sanctuary becomes as that light spreads. They don't. Which is why you have godparents as well as your parents. Their task is to guide you and help to develop these. And then when you turn 13, 14, 15, whatever, that you become confirmed. This is strengthening those gifts. And the big difference is you no longer have your mom and dad or your godmother and godfather saying, oh, okay, it's you that's getting up there to say, yes. This is what I want. I want the Holy Spirit to come into me, strengthen me with these gifts. Will all seven of them show up immediately? No. Chances are none of them will show up immediately. And will they in your life, and all seven of them show up? Not necessarily. You may find that you are stronger in one or two than you are in the rest. But that's fine. How many of you have a right hand? Yeah, good. Yeah. How about a, a left hand? You got a left hand? Hold them together. Do they look the same? Kind of. Yes and no, don't they? These are like the gifts of the Spirit. What they mean to you will be different than what they mean to somebody else. Everybody may have a right hand. Everybody may have a left hand. But yet your right and left hand... Even though they look very similar, they got five fingers and a palm and all that, but they're not the same. <clears throat> so what these gifts do for you may not be the same. But that's what it takes, is it takes all of us with these gifts of the Spirit to make life work. We don't need, how many were at Mass this morning? Okay, so you heard the first reading about Job and Job the complainer. Everything was oh, me. Oh, me. Which is what the music was he was playing. Job music. Oh, <laughs> it sounded so well like chant. Anyway, we ought to be more like St. Paul, which was the second reading. And his is, yes, I'm called to do this. Yes, I'm doing it because I don't have to. I want to. And that's the real key with these gifts of the Spirit. Nobody's telling you you have to. That's your free will. You're responding with, I want to. And what is it you want to? Well, that, that depends on what, where life takes you. It could be all, all different. But just like the hands... You can look the same, but you'll be different. Okay. What comes out of gifts? 
<coughs> what develops out of having gifts? Has everybody had a chance to write this down? Good. Gifts or freebies? <clears throat> this is something given to us by the Holy Spirit at our time when we are baptized and it is strengthened at our confirmation. <clears throat> When the Holy Spirit plants these gifts, gives you these gifts, you're like fertile soil. Okay? <clears throat> and like fertile soil, if I receive something and I put it in the soil, what do I expect it to do? Grow. Grow. Yes. Grow. And if I want to have something that's edible, like a tree, a pear, an apple, whatever, what's going to develop from that little seedling, that apple seedling or that pear seedling or that peach seedling, what's going to develop? Fruit. So developing from these gifts of the Spirit, we're going to have fruits of the Spirit. These are things that are going to develop from these seven gifts. And before we get crazy into this, we'll start with segment three, which is the 12 fruits of the Holy Spirit. Okay, segment three, the fruits of the Holy Spirit flow from the what of the Holy Spirit? The fruits of the Spirit, wait a minute, we're going to get opinions here. So, what say you? What do you think? They flow from the blank or something goes in there? I don't know. The root. The root. The root. Is that the thinker pose? Um, I have to be awake. A root. The what? Root. Root. I don't know. I don't know. Root. 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 Yes. What? The root. And I don't know. Would you have said root? Well, we spent all morning talking about the roots of the... Spirit. I know. It's like, what the what world? The answer? Starts with a big G. Does root start with a G? Dang it. No, dang it don't start with a G either. <laughs> but it starts, starts, starts with a G. So what four-letter word did we use? Apparently root. No, that starts with a G. Good. Oh, wait, no, I said it. Hold on. Good. Hold on, hold on. That's good. 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 Before the video, I was just talking about the fact that <coughs> the gifts are like like seeds. You take them, you plant them, and out of that grows these wonderful trees with fruits. So, question number one answer is gifts. Number two. Which one of these is not... A fruit of the Spirit. C. C, judgment, because that's one of the gifts of the Spirit, is right judgment. Uh, 
All right, so let's go to the next page because we just watched Chris go crazy. When I was a young child, my mother taught me my very first Bible verse. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Well, what if you die? So? What's the difference is that just your body, your mortal body dies. Your spirit will not. Knowing that the Lord was with me and that I needn't worry about or worry became a great consolation for me as I grew older. My parents were divorced and I began to struggle to find my way in life. I grew up hearing songs and stories from scripture about Jesus and God the Father. I was encouraged to value and foster a personal relationship with Jesus. It wasn't until my mother started taking me to a charismatic Protestant church that I recall hearing about the Holy Spirit. I have unique memories of that church. People falling down, raising their hands in prayer and praise. More than anything, I wanted the Holy Spirit to pour over me and make me speak in tongues like I'd seen so many others do. I begged the Lord to give me that gift, but he never did, not once. Those around me cried and called out as though they were connected directly to heaven, but I felt nothing. Why not me, Lord? Am I not worthy of the Spirit's gifts? I didn't understand. It wasn't until I became Catholic that I did begin to understand it, or more precisely, began to understand Him, the person of the Holy Spirit. As I searched the scriptures and learned of the actions of the Holy Spirit in the early church, I realized that just as the Spirit is not a dove or a flame of fire, the Holy Spirit is also not a feeling. Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, to comfort and guide us. The Spirit reminded the early apostles of all that Jesus had said and done so that we could have a consistent picture of Christ. The Spirit enabled the early church to endure great difficulties. And the same Spirit is in our lives, helping us to grow in holiness. At baptism, the Holy Spirit gives, us, gives each of us seven special gifts. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge, piety, fortitude, and fear of the Lord. Now we know three of these by different names. Piety we know as reverence. Fortitude we know as courage. And fear of the Lord, we know as wonder and awe of the Lord. These gifts are strengthened at confirmation. And as we exercise them and grow in virtue, our lives begin to bear beautiful fruit. Charity or love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, generosity, gentleness, faithfulness, modesty, self-control, and chastity. In this way, we show that we are truly children of God, shining the love of our Father into a dark and lonely world. Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, so that we truly have no reason to fear. In time, I came to understand that I already had all the gifts of the Holy Spirit and that it wanted to give, or that the Holy Spirit wanted to give me. He hadn't held anything back. I had everything I needed to do the things God wanted me to do. All I had to do was ask. So, 
the twelve gifts of the Holy Spirit. What do we start with? Yeah. Uh, we'll start with joy. Peace. Patience. Kindness. Goodness. Generosity. I'm going to put that over here. Let's see. Gentle goodness, gentleness. Faithfulness. Charity and generosity are the same thing. So we could say that, where, where did I put generosity? Oh, yeah, okay. So in the left-hand side, there are how many? There should be another ninth. There should be a ninth. Charity. Which one? Charity. I told you love. charity. Yeah, but he said no. Oh, oh yeah. Son. No, you're right. Okay. I'm sorry, I had it up there, right, it looked like one of the titles, and it was like, oh, that's not right. So there are seven, I mean, I'm sorry, nine gifts of the Holy Spirit on the left-hand side, and three on the right-hand side. How many do you think that the Catholic Church teaches? Twelve, all of them. And if you go to some Protestant churches, they'll kind of lose because in the Bible there's a statement that doesn't use all 12. And they'll go to the nine. What did the three that they're left off? Generosity, modesty, and chastity. Yes. What do they lean toward? Charity, charity joy, peace, patience, kindness. No. No, no, no. Modesty, chastity. Generosity. That's our relationship toward people. And that's our relationship toward ourselves. And they kind of leave that off. So if I want to be divorced and then get remarried, well, that's okay. Because that ain't one of the things in there that, that should interfere with me. Or if I want to, you know, get involved with, uh, hey, taking pictures and sending selfies that show me clothesless. I mean, that's a big thing. Exactly. Don't. Don't. Why? Because that's where modesty and chastity come in. So it helps us to know what is wrong and what is okay. And in fact, most things are okay, most things are okay, to a limit. We can overdo it. And then that becomes gluttony, which is one of the seven deadly sins. So, 
you never want to just go crazy doing things or make it, this is my life. Some do it. Some justify it. Well, that's what people want. Well, good. If you live forever, I guess people can make you happy. But at some point, you won't be. So, are you going to memorize all of these 12? Well, yes. Do we have an aid to help you do that? No. So, let's turn our Bibles to Galatians. It was a letter that St. Paul wrote to the Galatians. And we're specifically looking for chapter 5. Galatians. Galatians. Like G-A-L-A-T-I-A-N-S. Galatians. And it's a letter, so therefore it's really past the Gospels on your way back. Chapter 5. What he's doing here is he's talking about the, the concern. I mean, the, it's a tendency. It was in last week's readings at church. Do we get pulled to the flesh or do we get pulled to God? They're not one and the same. They are not one and the same. So if we are pulled to the flesh or man, oh, this is a great guy. I'm going to follow him. Okay. That's your free will. It's probably going to end up poorly for you. You'll be disillusioned in the end. And then there's the choice to follow God. Is it an easy path? No. Not necessarily. Is it a straight beeline to heaven? No. God writes straight lines with a lot of curves. So, it's not a straight line. As we heard in the first reading this morning from Job, everything is a chore. Good grief. It seems like there's no end to it. It's always, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there are people that, that that's how they feel. And you may know some. But as it says in here, in contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is what? Yes. Against such there is no law. Correct. Those who belong to Christ have crucified their flesh with passions and desires. Okay. Yes. We live in the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, let us also follow the Spirit. Let us not be conceited, conceited, provoking. And that's fine. That's good. So, we heard earlier, uh, we had one of our questions was about God and then neighbor. And that's exactly what Paul just said. 
We want to concentrate on these fruits of the Spirit and where they're going to lead us. And that's where it sums up. We're going to be led toward God and led toward our neighbor in terms of love, help, generosity, etc. These are the 12 fruits of the Spirit. Even though the Bible right there says there's nine of them, there's still 12. But later on, there's a more uh, stretched out version with those three on the right. So what's in the Catechism of the Catholic Church is the 12. We say there's 12 fruits of the Spirit. What's significant about 12? months. If we see the picture on the wall over there or the liking, yeah, 12, apostles. 12 apostles sitting around at the Last Supper. 12 apostles representing the 12 tribes of Israel. Yep. I don't know that it's God that just loves a number. But earlier we were, I, I forget which gospel it was where Peter had asked about having to forgive somebody well, do we have to forgive somebody seven times? And Jesus responded, no, 70 times seven. So here again, now we have the number seven. That just pops up. And how many gifts? Twelve. And how many gifts? Gifts. Seven. And how many fruits? 12. Name of gift. I w took them off the board, so now you're going to have to see what you remember. Wisdom. Different one. Knowledge. Knowledge. Uh, 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 reverence. reverence. Okay. Do what? Courage. 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 Understanding. Say again. Right judgment. right judgment. We'll go to the back. Knowledge. Knowledge. Have we hit seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we did. Knowledge, okay. Understanding. Yeah. Fear of the Lord. Wonder and awe. Wisdom. Now you can't keep repeating. We've got seven. So you got to pick something out of the group of seven. Two, four, five. You got two to pick from. And wonder and awe was already picked. Knowledge was already picked. I can think of one that starts with an R. Do what? Fortitude starts with an R. Wow. <laughs> Piety. Right judgment. And you can just pick one out of the seven. Understanding. Okay. That's good that you can do that. You can remember them because you know, next week and the coming weeks we're going to be asking. In fact, it may be, I don't know what time it is. My watch doesn't work. Two freckles past a hair. Oh, five minutes. Well, we could always start dismissal. But dismissal is going to not. Oftentimes today, dismissal will be that you have to mention one gift. But it could be that next week you have to mention seven gifts. So this is where I'd be spending part of the week with the Spirit telling me as I lay here at night and it's in my head. Oh, he says, I don't know something. Work crew. What's it mean? Work crew. Work crew. Wisdom, understanding, 
Mm, right judgment, knowledge, courage, reverence, wonder and awe. I'm done. All right. With that, we need a closing prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. My guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light, to guard, the rule and guide, amen. I want to thank all of you for putting your phones out there and not touching them.